Hi all and welcome back to my channel of an everyday life of an Aspie. If you're new, I welcome you all. I'm Aspie. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness and sharing my life story with autism and the like so that you can get the low down to know me behind the face or the masking of all these conditions that I have. So if you're into any of these and many more that I'm sharing hopefully in the near future, feel free to subscribe on the bottom right hand corner and if you do so, turn on the notification bell for future updates so you can not miss a single video of these. So it has been brought to my attention right now as it raised the price of paint and bedding. So let's begin this. As we all know that today, more than ever before, we are so consumed by society and the messages on the bulletin boards and social media of what they expect us to be, especially for us females in the way of beauty. We are told to be someone that we're not, who say to create an image based on the expectations and the high standards from society and just maybe people in general that puts us in some form of box and category that you know we're too ugly, too fat, too thin, too skinny and the like. Today and in, in today's society especially for the sake of beauty for most of us females we are being pressured basically to look a certain way like being the next supermodel of a super size zero or a size two. But my question is to you guys today is, do we really want to be living a life like this, being consumed by society and the messages that social media portrays to us females, especially for us living in that form of expectation and certain labels that we're too fat, too ugly, this is the way we should act, think and do. Do we want to really lose ourselves for the sake of just our sanity, for just following those trends? Do we actually know the rest as well in the making of the price towards pain and beauty? Is the world of cosmetic surgery that we hear about is the next best thing for most of us to look and feel our best. How do we define beauty will be different from each other. It may mean so many things. Beauty, how I see it, is in the eye of the beholder. It's the person's not the outer appearance but the inner appearance as well sure as how many people will believe that you know beauty is everything you know and that's the way it is you know we have to look and feel our best and suck it up because obviously our personality and character doesn't obviously count anymore i believe in saying this though also that it's seeing deep down inside that person's soul that is really special Beauty has varied over time though in the terms of definition as well as just in general how we look from various cultures and of us different perceptions and understandings. Beauty has been described and deposited through pi pictures and concepts that has penetrated our mind so much to the point that some of many of us females or maybe males as well if they're in that way of basically wanted to look their best somehow. What I've discovered that beauty is simple. Beauty could mean just happiness on its It's the images and moments that inspire and represents us the most distinct and remarkable attractiveness of our souls and our well-being. It's the moments we feel free and that we're feeling what we're feeling is real. It's the moments we feel proud of and the imminent it's the moments we feel alive and we're kicking and we're just breathing air. It seems like that element should inherent, should be inherent, I should say, but it's not. Beauty is often distorted nowadays and misunderstood and even shadowed by a wide amount of conflicting pressures and messages today. It's something we endlessly strive for rather than see in the true essence of essence on ourselves of our happiest moments of our lives. I think often times however I've been most happy and whether or not those align with the common beauty trends or standards that we live by. Has it been the nights where my hair stayed intact, body dressed attractively or skin shining flawlessly? It's been the moments I felt beauty because of the happiness in myself that I love myself and know my self worth. Which has not obviously derived from my appearance at all. No way far from it. It's derived from what I've been through based on my experiences. Despite of what I've been through, this is now who I've become as a young woman. I love the beauty that pulsates through my body when I'm with 
a particular guy that holds my hand that sends electrical waves back on, on the back of my messy hair some days. And also maybe just having the gentle lips touching onto my lips or cheeks. I love the beauty of how I feel on the beach when I'm walking on the sands and the wind blowing in my hair based on the waves slipping on my feet as well as with that the taste of salt in my mouth as well as the, the sand comes the sun touching my skin. Sometimes I'll bow to in a song when I'm stimming and whatnot but this is who I am. I love capturing moments through photos and videos that captures my beauty as well as just the beauty inside nature as well during some of my unrehearsed moments in life. These are the times when I feel most special and beautiful because I am alive, not because of what I'm saying. The exterior image that I'm portraying has been brainwashing me to believe to unwrap my insecurities and more. Those sensations that ignite the real flame of confidence and beauty and within in the souls of those constantly bombarded with messages telling them to believe otherwise. It's the little moments like when someone looks at you with respect and admiration and adores you. It's the true ecstasy of falling in love with people and places in a magical, easy way. It's the way it feels to achieve a goal you work tirelessly on certain things of your projects and obviously just go from there. It's the wrinkles from every effortless smile and fibril of strength that makes a face ever so perfect. It's the moments that build the woman we become and strive to be. Beauty is in the heart and the way it shines through us. We are a unique woman with experiences and memories that ties together seamlessly with no bound into a blanket of our own visions of beauty. We are different shapes, sizes, colours and different heritage and culture. We are mothers, daughters, cousins, nieces, nephews, grandmothers. We are activists, innovators, achievers and inspirationists. We are the lives and that we can change and to, through that change we can create within and that is beauty. Our bodies are simply a shell that allows us to radiate through these experiences and accomplishments through life. They are a case that displays our happiest and most incredible experiences for the world to share with us. No culture, company or concept would ever define beauty. It's composed of the moments that draw upon our strengths and consume us within the remarkable and intoxicating experience of being alive. On the other hand, the term beautiful woman is defined as a woman who has a distinctive personality. One who, I, who can laugh at anything, including themselves and one who is especially kind and caring to others. A woman who above all else knows the value of having fun and also look upon others and not taking life seriously. She's a woman that can trust and count on to brighten your day as well as trusting others. She can obviously make you feel good when you're around her. A beautiful woman is a woman who can be herself, as I said. A woman that is all time over and never gives a care in the world about what others think. A woman who's dying inside but on the, strong enough on the outside to let go of the pain and create a happy atmosphere for everyone around her. A woman isn't exactly sexually attractive but her face and personality can make your heart melt. A woman who's talented, smart and so different from every other. Hey, let's go into what I really want to share with you all. Botox, butless injectables, is, the, is this beauty normal? The real question is to ask ourselves in the world of beauty and cosmetics is that the cosmetic industry obviously is booming and creating a dangerous legacy of uh, the woman. Many young women has made a decision sometime in their life to change their looks either themselves or as we reach a certain age in our life because now it's the thing of the past once you reach your prime that obviously cosmetic surgery is used for younger girls now to go under the knife. A lot, in some countries alone some young teenage girls at the age of 18 have it all by going under the knife or even for other reasons and they are a personal insecurity we are all born the way we are or they are there are very few people who would say they are flawless so genetics are often a major motivator for cosmetic surgery it's a personal choice but there is nothing wrong with that don't get me wrong and wanting to change yourself into the way you look while going 16, under the knife the five most common cosmetic surgeries were breast augmentation facelift nose shaping liposuction and eyelid surgery as could be expected, breast augmentation continues to be the top procedure it has been ever since the year of 2006. Other noteworthy cosmetic procedures gaining popularity are buttock augmentations, lower body lifts and breast lifts. 
While cosmetic surgery is hugely popular, it can be posed as a problem if a patient doesn't like anything about herself, especially in their college years. Be wary that the desire to get cosmetic surgery should be to help one or two insecurities and not completely alter the everyday appearance because you hate the way you look. In such cases, you could be at risk for more serious psychological disorders. So there are some basically reasons behind it. It could be the acne scars, health problems, a genetic abnormality or deformity, extreme weight loss to do this. So the acne scars, obviously, it's pretty much a college year can speak to negative confidence level associated with bad acne. While most of us can simply wait for a pimple to pass, others are susceptible to extreme acne scarring. According to these colleges, can sometimes do reach out to plastic surgeons to get such scarring removed, however, and are made less unnoticeable. In fact, scars revision was the fourth most common reconstructive procedure in 2006. Health problems. Oftentimes young people undergo plastic surgery because it's necessary to fix a physical problem or injury. From eyelid surgery for improved vision to nasal surgery for better breathing, plastic surgery even at a young age can benefit their health. A genetic abnormality or deformity. Well, physical abnormalities and deformities are rare and wide ranging. Sometimes a young woman may opt to have plastic surgery to fix her appearance. This decision alone should be made with the individual with the abnormality or deformity if she feels deemed fits to her appearance as having a negative effect on her everyday life. Extreme weight loss. No matter your age, if you lose an extreme amount of weight, especially at a quite a pace, you are very likely to have excess skin. That's no brainer. Many such individuals will undergo plastic surgery in order to remedy the skin that cannot shrink. Usually this type of su surgery leaves scars, intense scars on the body. So it's recommended that an overweight individual who wants to lose weight do so slowly and healthily by doing their own exercise and diet routine. Plastic surgery is most importantly a personal decision. There will always be controversial opinions based on this topic, however, alone, especially for women of a young age. But it's ultimately up to you whether you want to go under the knife or not. There are a lot of different types of comedic surgeries and it, it's rapidly growing in the last few years as mentioned. Also, what if some procedures that are done under the knife goes wrong is the question you need to ask yourself. Because obviously there has been some cases. Now since the young ones may see on social media and have it, had it done that some of them get the thrills and obviously want to get rid of the taboo about cosmetic surgery. What are the complications and risks in some of these surgeries? Questions is, are we aware of the risks and the benefits of doing this? Here are some of the 10 complications risks to think about before going under the knife. 1. Hematoma. Hematoma is a pocket of blood that resembles a large painful bruise. It occurs in 1-6% to of breast augmentation procedures and is the most common complication after a facelift. Hematoma is a risk in nearly all surgeries involved and treatment sometimes includes additional operations to drain the blood. Damage. The potential for nerve damage is present in many different types of surgical procedures. Numbness and tingling are common about the plastic surgeries and can be signs of nerve damage. Most women experience a change in sensitivity following breast augmentation surgery and 15% permanently lose their nipple sensation. Through post of care includes steps to reduce the risk of infection it remains one of the more complications of plastic surgery. In breast surgeries for instance cellulitis a skin infection occurs in two to four percent of people. It can be internal and severe and it will require IV antibiotics. Deep vein thrombosis is a condition where blood clots form in deep veins usually in the leg. When these clots break off and travel to the legs or lungs it's known as pulmonary embolism. Though relatively uncommon, these complications can be fatal. Scarring. Surgery typically results in some scarring. Since cosmetic surgery seeks to improve the way you look, scars can be particularly troubling. Hypertrophic scarring, for instance, is an abnormally red and thick raised scar that often occurs 2 to 5 percent of breast augmentation precision. Although most people are satisfied with their post-operative outcomes, disappointment within the results is a real possibility. People who undergo breast surgery may experience contouring or a symmetry problem, while those undergoing facial surgeries could simply not like the results. Liposuction can be traumatic for internal organs. Visceral perforations or punctures can occur when the surgical probe comes into contact with internal organs. Repairing these injuries can require additional surgery. 
variations can also be fixations. Anesthesia is the practice that allows patients to go into surgery without feeling the procedure. General anesthesia, where medication is used to make you unconscious, can sometimes lead to complications. These include lung infection, stroke, heart attacks and death. More common anesthesia risk includes waking up confused and disorientated and shivering. A least common complication is anesthesia awareness or waking up in the middle of surgery. Seroma is the condition that occurs when serum from your blood pulls beneath the surface of the skin resulting in swelling and pain. It looks like a large blister. This can occur after surgery of any kind. And this is the most complication common complication of a tummy tuck because seromas can become infected they're often drained with a needle effectively removing the loss as with many surgery some blood loss is expected however uncontrolled blood loss can lead to a drop in blood pressure with potentially deadly outcomes blood loss can happen while on the operating table but also internally after surgery today looking your best has become almost an obsession for many people more and more people are going under the knife to achieve the word perfection Nips and tucks aren't just for celebrities, however, as I shared, because those in the mainstream are seeking pl plastic surgery to walk away looks like a new person. And while most cosmetic surgery patients are pleased with the results, there are certain those who have poor results. So, measures obviously that will include such as the wrist infection, neurological dysfunction, asymmetry, skin necrosis and so much more. In most cases plastic surgeons are highly skilled and properly trained to perform facelifts without committing any errors whatsoever. But some surgical errors can lead to permanent injury or even death. Facelift errors may occur when the plastic surgeon has implemented poor surgical technique or substandard care when carrying out the procedure surgically. This can result in pain and suffering. Due to the Due to the nature of facelift surgery, such errors can also result in a patient suffering from psychological trauma and more stress at the idea of having to undergo further correctiveness of the rhinoplasty. The complications in rhinoplasty is, obviously, as we know, rhinoplasty is a surgery to reshape the nose and it can be corrected by bumps, change the angle to the tip of the nose. Depending on the desired result, again, as always, could also mean the cartilage bone to be removed. And there are risks associated with rhinoplasty surgery. Bleeding, holes in the septum, skin necrosis, infection, nasal blockage and complications of anesthesia and just a few of the risks. Possible that your new look is not what you really wanted in the first. Surgery includes bleeding changes in the breast sensation, faulty position of the implant, implant leakages, persistent pain and possibly a revision of surgery. Surgery, the most popular one is augmentation with fat, fat grafting which referred as a Brazilian butt lift. There has been records of at least worldwide 98 deaths due to cosmetic surgery gone wrong. In the last five years of butt lifts, when it comes down to having these surgeries, it is known there has been death being under the knife than any other cosmetic surgery altogether. At least 32 people has died. The problem arises when the fat gets into the gluteal area, flows into the vascular blood supply to the veins. Once the fat is deposited, it is then travelling through the vein and up to the heart and lungs. The BBL procedure is performed using a combination of liposuction and fat transfer which are performed under general anesthesia to ensure the comfort and safety of the patient. First liposuction is performed to harvest fat for that transfer. This is most commonly performed on the abdomen to provide maximum body sculpting results. This fat is then purified to obtain the highest quality fat for injection. Next, numerous injections are made into the buttocks to provide or produce a fuller rounder shape of your butt. In Australia alone, however, for breast augmentation, of the breast implants, it's booming, and there are some cosmetic surgeons over there that aren't forever qualified or registered. With bone part of the surgery being done, there is a risk of ne necrosis where the skin cell starts to die. Necrosis in the death of is the death of tissues in the body. Necrosis can be treated with the dead tissue being removed, but the affected tissue can't be returned to good health, however. This is due to the lack of blood and oxygen to the tissue. It may be triggered by chemicals, cold trauma, radiation, or chronic conditions as it can affect many areas of the body including bone, skin, organs, and other tissues alike. There are basically, in the last few years, there has been reported qualified or trained, not yet trained yet in Australia, that have been given two days to do a job or a on the job course to, to do their training with real proper surgeons so that they don't make any mistakes. There are some surgeons that are doing 
these type of surgeries that are qualified in other areas of the field of work of what they do for surgery or what have you than the other ones that has been clearly mentioned. When things go wrong, however, the process is what I briefly mentioned. It has been known to the patients has to pay the big price of the mistakes that surgeons make and that will cost them thousands and thousands of dollars as well as also the costing of their life of the patient as well as death of the patients. Turn this on what I'm sharing. Obviously, as I said, this is up to you girls who did decide to have cosmetic surgery. We need to know the pros and cons if we do so. But for me, in my own personal opinion, there needs to be a stop in this industry as there will be more people that will likely to be harmed or even dead. More more people are, that are acting as gods, obviously, of the surgeons with no skills or qualifications and wanting to try and make quick money, obviously, through this beauty industry. And obviously, it's the expense of the cost of patients that are still willing to go under the knife regardless of the risks. The question to ask is for surgeons, are they doing it for the money or are they doing it for what the patients really want? Also, we need to know the risks and causes, as I said, for these different surgeries I've clearly mentioned. So again, as a recap, do your research. Do we still want to risk it all? Do we really want to be living a life that is consumed by how the way society looks upon us as well as the media for us in the way of living in a box full of expectations and standards to act, look, speak and act a certain way? Do we really want to lose ourselves just for the sake of our insanity? So this quickly ends a video of the price and pain of beauty. Hopefully you like this. Smash the like, comment below. Feel free to follow me on my social medias. Feel free to share this videos around to family and friends. I want to ask any one of you who has done this or not, what are your opinions on this? I know it will be a touchy subject as well as maybe a lot of differences of opinions, but the floor is there open for discussion. So be kind to one another when it does come up. And I'll further do guys also in saying this, that I am at this point of time while I've been doing things, I've been reaching out to many people that really, I hope really wants to participate in my next collab for suicide awareness for my video for mental health awareness month next month here in new zealand so if any one of you are interested i have posted it in some of the groups with the help of lulu which i will give her a thank you right now thank you lulu so now for the do guys until next time thanks for your support thanks for watching i'll see you again soon Ciao.